it's a very maybe outdated system. I think there's a lot of problems with it. I mean, it, it means a lot of really good films probably don't get made. And a lot of films with the same silly actors we've seen a million times over are always in the same movies because... How confident were you that you could pitch this movie and sell it to investors? So I think having this proof of concept that I made was super helpful to both give me the confidence because I knew I'd made something really great with that. Um, but then I just knew it was also gonna make it so much easier to sell the movie to people. Um, but I knew no one, you know, I have no friends or family connection to the industry. I have no agent or manager. I still don't even, <laughs> as of right now, like it's such an outside world, Hollywood, the, the true system, right? It's not very welcoming to, to outsiders, you know, I mean, it's, it's very tough to kind of break those walls. And so, um, it just took a lot of time and being super persistent. I mean, I just never gave up and that's really how this movie got made because there's plenty of times where I thought, man, this is never gonna happen and I should give up, um, but I didn't, I just kept going. And that's really how this movie got made. No, almost no other, of course, their script was good. The, the proof of concept was good. I got lots of luck along the way, but more than anything, it was just this persistence of not giving up and continuing to fight for it and just telling myself, I was gonna make this movie, doesn't matter if I was like 100 years old by the time I got made, like I was gonna make this movie one way or the other at some point. And I think that's just how it, how it got made. So no agent or manager, and the film opens in 10-ish days in theaters yeah. and on demand, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You basically rent it wherever you can rent things, and then it'll be in, I think, 10 different cities uh, the first weekend, yeah, playing. Wow, yeah. okay. So when you hear people say, well, I don't have an agent or manager, was that you at one time saying that? Or was that never, again, resourcefulness, you, you don't worry about that? I think after having a little bit of a window into it when I made this first feature when I was in high school, basically, and then spending a decade or so kind of adjacent to the industry, but not really in it by doing a film festival and then directing commercials, I think I just, I realized enough that it's very difficult to do anything, but that this industry, it doesn't really want to go and find people. It, it really wants to wait until you already have something for them and they'll maybe find you. And so... I kind of knew, I never even tried to get an agent or manager because I just knew it was probably a waste because, uh, I don't know, I, I guess I didn't think until I had something that I could really show as a success that I would be able to be of use, I guess, to them in that way. And so maybe that's just my own, I guess, thinking or being too critical, but I just think that's, there's no guarantee just because you are, I know plenty of people who've gotten agents or managers and then nothing happens, you know, and so... I think more than anything, it's just about what are you gonna create yourself? And I think that's the key to everything. Of course, that could open a lot more doors and that would have probably sped up the process if I had had that for sure. Cause it took still probably four years from the time I'm starting to write it to getting to finance it, you know, which that's still a long time. I'd like to get that a lot shorter, hopefully for the next one. Um, but yeah, I think above all, you just need to kind of go go at it and 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 figure out a way and, and you'll eventually, if your if your script and your thing is good enough, I think people will eventually take note and, and it'll get get made. It just might take quite a long time. Can you take us through the process of how you got the money for Borrego, or like step by step? Sure. So, I think with anything with features, the financing is so much based on the cast and this kind of perceived value that the cast has. So, for better or worse, you know that's how a lot of movies get made. I would say that there's even movies that get made where the financing folks or the distributor maybe doesn't even read the script all the way, you know? They look at what is this film and who's in it, you know? Um, that's not all the cases, but in so many ways, that's how films get made. And so that was really clear that we needed some sort of talent um, to kind of finance this movie. Um, and my film consists of one female lead who was written as Caucasian, then the rest of the cast is all Latino. And the kind of sad reality of Hollywood is that neither of those people have as much value as maybe like a white man actor. And um, especially the Latinos was, was hard because there's a couple names who we all know who are really famous, right? But unless that's one of those names, everyone else in Hollywood's eye has basically no foreign value or no kind of, you know, I mean value in the sense of what they think is value, right? Um, and then there's also not as many um, probably um, 
female actresses who also have the same value as like as a, as a male actor. And so it was a tougher position to be. And I even had a few producers tell me like, hey, you should change one of the characters to like the sheriff in my movie who is also Latino, even though he's not a drug dealer or anything like that. But it just, it was authentic to this world and the, to this town we were in, right? I didn't want all the bad guys just to be Mexican or whatever. And so, but you know, multiple times someone said, well, change that guy into a white guy and we can get someone who's more famous to play that part and that will help you finance the movie. Or even the lead character, maybe if that was a man, I mean, it sounds cliche and kind of crazy, but that was still what, really what people were saying, you know? And it's, um, you know, it, it took a lot of pushing back too because I I really wanted to make this film authentically with especially the, the Latino actors. I wanted them to be totally authentic. And so, you know, these were, these were, I spent a year plus looking for, for actors from Central America and Mexico where, um, they were just amazing actors, but maybe were kind of under, under, undiscovered in a lot of ways. So like one of our actors, this was his first American film he'd ever been in, you know, but his, so his value was basically zero, we'll say in terms of dollar. And so what that meant is we had to put all of the value into our leading actress and that eventually ended up being Lucy Hale who got that part. Um, and so it was basically her value financing the film. And she, um, you know, for her, this was a really, also a really kind of big stepping stone film in terms of um, performance in her kind of career too, because she had never done a film like this. You know, she came from a very famous TV show that was, she was on for a decade or so that became very famous. And she's done other features, but she's never done something quite this serious and this kind of media. And she was really excited about it. Um, but she does have a lot of value because she has a huge fan base and her films that she has been in have done pretty well. And so we were basically had to use her value because I, as a director, had no value because this was really my first real, real film. And so that's how they looked at it. The, the, we'll sign by they, I mean Hollywood and the financiers, how they looked at why, how this film should get made. And so that basically gave us a number that we could then kind of create to what is the budget of this movie. You know, it was almost working backwards. Like this is how much we'll pay you and this is what the movie can be made for kind of, you know, and it's a, it's a very maybe outdated system. I think there's a lot of problems with it. I mean, it, it means a lot of really good films probably don't get made. And a lot of films with the same silly actors we've seen a million times over are always in the same movies because um, they get made. Or you see these really kind of crappy action films with one famous person and get made, you know, because of that. So it's not a great model, but unfortunately, at least as of the time I made this movie, that's the model I had to fit into to get this movie made. Um, and so that's how I did it. We had to kind of work in that system. But I was lucky to be able to, by getting this one actress who had enough value, she then allowed me to then cast the rest of the movie with people who were not as as famous and were more just really talented, compelling actors who were authentic and, and could bring so much to the movie. So in the end, it all worked out. But it was really hard and um, just very thankful that uh, Lucy got excited about it and wanted to join it because she's really what from that point on is really what compelled to get this movie financed. Right, and sorry, this came from a casting director that you were able to get her the script? Yeah, so, you know, I had, I had sent, I was sending my proof of concept short film and my feature around to various people. One person who I had met probably 10 years ago who was an assistant at the time was now like an executive and she was working in TV, but she knew some people in film and so she sent it to this producer. Uh, he liked the, both the script and the, the short I had done. And so he wanted to try to help me get it made, you know, so he had a casting director that he was working with all that often where she, you know, we had, I had no money to start paying anyone. So she agreed to kind of help us out on a, as a favor and just send the script to a few of the agencies, you know, and get their feedback and see, you know, if there were some names that they had that they thought might be interested in this kind of project. And so that's how we kind of started the process. So we got different names of some actors and from there, Lucy's name was was in that list. And, you know, at first, I mean, I knew her name, I knew who she was, but I was, I was not, it wasn't like, oh my God, that's her, she's she's Ellie, because, you know, she had been in Pretty Little Liars and the sh other shows where it was very much kind of teen drama kind of type stuff. And that's not what Borrego is. But I watched some of her work and I realized that she's this incredible actress that just hadn't been really given these high quality scripts and, and projects to, to sink her teeth into because she is a really amazing actress. And I knew that this would almost be as good as working with a, 
a, a undiscovered person because no one has, would have seen her do this kind of role. So it instantly became super exciting for me to have her because I knew she would have the kind of the the famous clout or whatever to get us get the movie made and market it. But she would almost be like introducing someone to the world again because she had never done something like this. And that's what it was. I mean, she's incredible in this. And I'm, I'm so excited for people to see it because it, she is amazing in it. Um, so yeah, that's that's really kind of how it how it worked for me. And the sheriff, the decision to have him as a single dad, I thought that was interesting. We don't really hear too much about single dads. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, I, I'm. I don't know. You know, I don't know where that personally came from. That wasn't my experience, but I, I guess I liked this idea of the dad and daughter relationship. Um, I kind of liked. I wanted all the characters to have something they were struggling with, you know. And so, him. He's this sheriff, deputy sheriff in a very small little town where there's not very much action. You know, he hands out speeding tickets. That's kind of his his job, right? And we don't really talk about it in the film, but the idea is that he's probably also kind of run away from something or has come here to have kind of a safe place for him and his daughter. And he's not looking for any trouble and doesn't see much action. And so he's kind of thrust into this action and is totally out of his comfort zone. His daughter then ends up getting caught up in two. And so his worst fears have all come, you know, together with that. And so I think I just like the idea that he had so much on the line with just being fully responsible. His whole life was really being taken care of her, and that was was what he was fighting for in it. So that's kind of where his kind of backstory came from, yeah. 